Welcome home, Raiders. Tonight! Uh, I don't know if you heard about this, but apparently there was a thing at a place in New York and where London met up with Philly, and and uh, then somebody won! And we'll cover that, and like so much more, as Convert Trade presents Battle.net Sports. Welcome to Battle.net Sports, everybody. My name is Pat Crane. I am your host. And uh, tonight, we actually will be talking a, a lot about Overwatch League uh, with Fist. I mean, there was, there was kind of a big thing. So we'll kind of do a season recap. We'll kind of talk about the, the finals. We'll talk about all that stuff. Uh, plus, there is a lot of action happening in Hearthstone right now. Not only do we have uh, the new expansion coming out uh, very, very soon, but we also have the end of Season 2, the beginning of Season 3, plus Hearthstone Global Games is a thing that is still going on, and we will talk to Joss uh, to sort it all out for us. And uh, that's not all, because HGC is in, a, is in a state. It's in a state of preparedness for the Western and Eastern clashes. So we need to talk to Jules Scott about all of that stuff and help us make sense of it. All of that and so much more, I'm sure, uh, happens right now. Overwatch League Grand Finals was this last weekend, and here to help us uh, sort of all the things out is uh, Thist. Hello, Thist. Hello. And of course, you know Thist from Lagging Balls and uh, Battle.net News as well. Um, and I don't know. Okay, so l last week we were talking about the extreme shock of what happened in Overwatch League playoffs in the semifinals, New York XL and uh, and the LA Valiant kicked out of the semi after the semifinals. They're like, nope, you're out. And so yep. it was Philly and London. Um, and London just kind of rolled. They just they were just rolling. I think we predicted that like if well, you said something like if. London's having a good day, then nobody stands a chance. And they had two good days. So you were right. <laughs> they really, they really, really did. Um, yeah, and, they did. And I will say uh, with all seriousness that uh, without profit, none of that stuff would have happened. I don't think. Who it knew that profit, the little, you know, dude with the flipping off the camera, like what <laughs> season one would become hey. MVP of the grand finals. Right. Yeah. He got like a thousand dollar fine or whatever it was and yeah. and all that kind of stuff for flipping off the camera. He's just such a gangster. He couldn't help but come back and just make MVP. Like I've right. always respected him after that. Like he says it was an accident. No, he was just marking his territory, you know, like he's the alpha male, like he's gonna show you what's up. Yep. I don't know what I'm saying. But I mean, some seriously great plays from Profit. Uh Birdering as well, but uh and oh, yeah. um and also, you know, as far as tank plays go uh gesture was you know spot on for all all the stuff that he was doing so i mean yeah. just the team was looking good but profit was looking excellent they managed to block out eqo from almost everything i mean yes and that's surprising because he was playing his best you know right like, and, he was ferocious but and he was just boxed out like all of day two, completely boxed out. Didn't have a, didn't make really many big plays at all. I think that Carpe had some big plays, and but I mean, when you're the only one on the team that's making plays, you just can't get anywhere. That's true. So that's true, and and it was interesting because like London had that with Profit, but they were also you know like they were playing their best, but their best player was like essentially carrying them all with his Hanzo and, and Tracer. Um, but like, it's, it's, it sucks because like, you know, it was a lot shorter than everybody hoped, but at the same time, like both teams were, you know, London was obviously playing better, but both teams were really, really dishing it out. Like battle mercy plays, uh, diva alts that actually killed 
one or more people, you know, which is always really cool to see uh, Widow plays. And most most prevalently, I think, is Hanzo plays. Like, every couple of seconds, you get another Hanzo alt. And, like, whether it killed anybody or not, like, it would just clear the map every single time yeah. and just... I it gotta was, learn how to get on Hanzo. Like I gotta be a good Hanzo now. Because right. oh my god! Right. No, it was it was pretty cool to watch, and and so there were some some really great plays all around. Um, exciting to watch. Uh, and you were actually at Barclay. You were at the Barclay oh, Center. Nice. So, um, tell us about that. Tell us about what that uh, was like. You know, especially for those guys that maybe have been to Blizzard Arena or at least have seen a lot of it, right? So how yeah. how how was it overall? Um. Well, it was completely sold out both days and it was like, you know, when you roll up to BlizzCon and you start seeing people in Blizzard merch and, you know, they're all like congregating and hanging out and stuff. It was like that, but in Brooklyn and it was incredible. And, you know, walking in, there's like cosplay people, people with signs, there's merch everywhere. They're handing out thunder sticks and like towels and temporary tattoos and stickers and all that stuff. And uh, I was sitting on the floor. And uh, my friends saved me these amazing seats. I was sitting right behind Rockus. I was sitting behind all of the um, Overwatch League ambassadors. So like players from the other teams that weren't playing there. Um, so I got to like stare at the back of like Rockus and AKM and Custa, etc. cetera. And uh, uh, Jane sat in front of me, which was really cool. I got to meet him and um, there was just like cameras going every place. And so it was like walked back and forth in front of me at one point and i think the the audience was massively hyped and it it was exactly like you know what you'd see at the blizz arena like just with like people holding up funny signs or like dress sure. silly or you know just acting yeah. crazy um but on a, a massive massive scale and it was incredible and i think the crowd was going wild the whole time uh but not as much as when jeff appeared all of a sudden on the side he was just there and this crowd was like chanting jeff 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 and he was just like waving at everybody you know like it was oh it was so good and it was just and i don't know everything was great except for uh the dj khaled uh <laughs> thing yeah, I, I i i so i missed it because i was uh, i just kind of like i was like walking away doing stuff uh during halftime so i totally missed it um but I guess that people kind of had a beef with it. So oh, bad. It was so bad. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm glad I missed it. I don't really care one way um, or the other. But if 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 you feel like okay, don't watch it, but definitely do check out the <laughs> vod because not not for the performance, but just for the chat. It's I've okay. So I've never seen Overwatch League chat united in one opinion ever, except for that performance. Everybody was just cringe and laughing and just asking why this is happening. It was the thing is like it it seemed that DJ Khaled didn't really know where he was. Okay. Or or why he was there. Like he he kept calling it this event. And the only time like he <laughs> sort of referenced Overwatch was when he said, Overwatch me. Um, and then he did a little dance. He tried to do this dance like twice. And it didn't really work out. And the worst part was, like, uh, I guess his shtick, like, I don't really know DJ Khaled, but people were telling me, like, his shtick is, like, he will go on stage and he has a DJ. Not him, even though he is technically a DJ, I guess, because <laughs> DJ Khaled. Maybe that's just his, like, the first two names of his name. I'm not sure. Sure, I don't know. Um, but he's got this, you know, actual DJ on the side. And the DJ, like, samples, not whole songs. Like, he didn't go through one whole song, just a bunch of songs. And then... You know, he would yell one or two words and then he would pass the mic to the audience and, you know, wait for us to finish the lines for him. The problem was nobody knew any of his songs and we <laughs> didn't, we like, we're just, you know, and like half the crowd just sat down and laughed at him. Oh, the boy. other half tried really, really hard to at least, you know, get up and, and dance do and do something. Yeah. Do something. Um, that okay, so just what you're telling me right now, it kind of reminds me of if you uh, watched or if you were at BlizzCon a few years ago, because it was the Jay Moore years where he was doing the uh, the the uh, costume, the cosplay contest and stuff like that. 
It was yeah. always like, it was always like, uh, why are you here, bud? You don't seem to be really into it. So yeah. why don't you just, yeah. I think that's one of the problems about um, something that is so uh, fan enthusiasm based is that you can tell the fakers. Oh and, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it's just kind of weird. Yeah. All right. It's- Enough of uh, DJ Khaled. Let's <laughs> let's not talk about him anymore because I don't. Uh, it's not worth our time. <laughs> sure. I don't think. Although somebody did say, well, why don't you take that DJ Khaled money and and put it towards uh, contenders? So I Seriously. thought it was, and I'm like, all right, that's uh, that's legit. All right. Anyway, um, so we have the London versus Philly game. London wins. I thought it was great. Uh, you know, from the stream's perspective, I thought it was uh, really well done. Obviously, uh, very pro as always. Uh, just way too short. That was yeah. my that was my only takeaway from that one. So, way too short, but I mean, you it, know, was, it was it was one three oh three. I mean, it was it was just that quick. It was so yeah. so fast. But that's Overwatch for you, and they really made the best of it, and they they drew it out as much as possible. And, you know, it, it was very yeah. successful overall. And so, like, so what did you think of the season overall? I mean, I, I know that we're both fans of, of Overwatch League, obviously, because we're talking about it. Um, but did you think that it lived up to the initial hype that we were all in as soon as we heard about Overwatch League a year ago or whatever? Yes. And okay. then some. Okay. Like, just... I don't know. Like, the, the, there's there's so many facets to this esport and this league and the broadcasting and and the casters and the fans and everything. And you know, like, s- we've learned a lot. We've learned that like meta is probably the most important thing. Uh, you know, right in front of uh, I don't know, proper communication because sure. you know it, it seemed like meta and team communication were the most important things and like the team that had the meta down and the team that had the communication down, whether it be like, you know, simple uh, shot calling or actual like uh, language barriers, the teams that had those things down would succeed. But then, you know, how long is that meta going to last? Is it just going to be for that season, that right. stage? Is it just going to be for a couple of weeks until another hero is announced? So I think like where that's that's hard to follow sometimes and and where it can seem like uh really one-sided at times it it also just shows us that like since Overwatch is an ever evolving game so too is the league and so too are the teams and hopefully like you know like this is all the inaugural season and we didn't know what to think and they didn't know what to expect and and now we have right a firmer grasp on you know what's going on and so i think you know with the addition of more teams in stage two and uh like with the inevitable trading and like adding of players and taking away of players like it's it's going to be just as unpredictable next time as it was this time but the thing that we can know is that like i don't know like the community around this team and of the teams in the league and i don't know just overwatch league in itself is very strong and obviously yeah. it's very popular. Obviously the fans are diehard and that's, that only means good things for Blizz. And as we can see with like the, the sponsors that are popping up and you know, the, the stadiums that are going to be going up and like, you know, the teams stretching further across the world and, you know, with the broadcasts going on ESPN and ABC, like my mom was watching it on ABC accidentally, yeah. stuff like that. Like this is gonna, like, it's already blown up and it's, going to blow up even more and we're all along for the ride. So, well, and, and, I don't know. And that's what I was going to say is, is I think that at least if, if nothing else, they've proved that they can, um, that they have won over fans because of their, just of their stream numbers and stuff like that. They've been really solid. And I think yep. they were over 250 K for the finals, which is amazing. Um, and, uh, then we also have sponsorship, which is the next part of things, making sure that businesses feel like they can be involved in the, in the league. And they've done that, uh, which is great. And then the third thing is, uh, you know, turning, turning the head of Disney is a very tough thing to do. Yeah. And, uh, making sure that, this is on ABC, uh, Disney XD, ESPN Prime. This was the first uh, finals ever on ESPN Prime for a video game. So that's awesome. Uh, you know, it's not so much the viewership on those channels, but just the fact that they're doing something about that. That's yep. that's uh, that's pretty cool. 
And so all three of those things, plus, uh, like you kind of mentioned, um, next year we're actually going to have, next season we're actually going to have a few more teams to add to the mix. So tell us about those teams and where they're going to be located. Do, and, sure. do, and do we know their mascot yet? <laughs> no, no, no mascots no yet. Mascot um, yet. All right, all right. <laughs> But uh, apparently the league is anticipating selling six expansion slots within the next month. Um, so the ones that we kind of know about now um, are Paris. So we kind of saw that coming. Okay. Uh, Guangzhou, China, uh, and Atlanta. So okay. we know about those right now. And I right. think that's pretty exciting. All right. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, and, you know, I'm sure that Paris will just have like the Eiffel Tower as their mascot. It's just going to be the... Why wouldn't they? It's going to be the Paris Towers. It's going to be kind of <laughs> kind of lame. It should be a baguette, though, you know. <laughs> baguette, right. That's exactly. already an Overwatch meme, so. You're, pro you're probably right. Um, <laughs> so, uh, season one is in the books, and now it's time to look forward to what's coming uh, over the next month and uh, next couple of months, really, um, as we head towards BlizzCon. Uh, first up, we have the All-Star Game. Uh, for Overwatch League. So that is going to be played August 25th and 26th, right? Yep. Um, and then n next, which actually happens before that, is August 17th is when Overwatch World Cup starts. Oh. So, so excited. We're on the road to BlizzCon all of a sudden, which is really cool because now we have all these teams playing um, from all these different countries, and that's exciting. It really is like the all-star game is going to be cool because I don't know. It's just like a mixed bag mostly of, uh, you know, players from different teams. So, you know, even if your team didn't win the grand finals, like mine didn't, maybe <laughs> a player from your team will win the all-star game or maybe a player from your team will win the world cup or maybe, uh, the team from your country will win who knows, but right. I don't know. The Overwatch hype is continuing. There's a little bit of a break right now, but it's coming and it's going to be fantastic. Yep. So we get a few weeks off for, from Overwatch and then we'll get back into it with the World Cup and the All-Star game. And I'm guessing that you'll be back to talk about that stuff as well as uh, WoW Arena. AWC comes back in mid-September. Yes, September 14th. So with the uh, with the EU and, U and NA Cups number one. Yes. Right? So yeah. Uh, so that is it for now. Fist, I guess we'll see you in a little bit. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be a couple weeks. Right? I'll miss this. <laughs> well, and you. We, well, we will miss you too, but we'll see you over on uh lagging balls and of course Battle.net News and I'm sure other places as well. So Fist, Probably. thank you so much, and we will talk to you soon. It's time to clash. Not quite yet, though. Not quite yet, though. It's it's time to get ready to clash. And, uh, of course, I'm talking about HGC, Heroes, uh, stuff. So, Jules Scott is here. Hello, Jules. Hello, hello. Are you, are you ready to clash? I don't I know. I am so ready to clash. I mean, <laughs> I'm going to be sitting around this weekend with no HGC to watch. i got to wait until the 10th. Right. Come on. Right. So, I'm really ready to clash. Well, uh, so... HGC, the, the the clashes are set now. We know who's going to them and all that kind of stuff. And uh, so I need your your input. Uh, who who did well enough to make the cut? So we've got our team set. Finally, it was definitely determined by this past week's action. Uh, so in NA, yeah. we've got Heroes Hearth Esports, Tempo Storm, Team Freedom, and Team Octalysis in that order of ranking. Um, and it came down to a really tight race towards the end, whether Endemic was going to be able to win. And basically what they had to do was they had to beat Tempo Storm, but they only had to win two games against them. They didn't even actually have to win the match. They just had to take two games off of them. And they didn't. They, could, they couldn't <laughs> so do it. They couldn't do it. No. They they oh, had us going. Tough. They took game one, and it was like, just one more. They just need to take one more. And Temple Storm said, nope. And <laughs> they said, you're not going to Western Clash. Octalysis uh -huh. is going in your place. Right. So there you go. And then in EU, um, we have Team Dignitas in first place, Team Liquid, second place, Method, and Leftovers. Those are your four rankings. 
of the teams going from EU. And uh, it's going to be a good one. This is going to be... I'm excited. They announced who the commentators were, which we have new names showing up on the desk this time around. Um, we've got new teams that haven't really been playing a lot in these clashes before. I'm really stoked to see what's going to happen. And I just want to see the bracket. I haven't seen the bracket yet because they haven't announced it. Right. Right. So we'll wait. So we'll wait to see all that stuff. Um, but were there from this last week, were there some were there some good games where you you're like, oh man, you have to watch this, like even if it's on the yeah. bot or whatever. Yeah, I would definitely say um, that you'd want to. Well, I mean, you could watch the Tempo Storm versus Endemic. I already told you how it came out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> spoilers, <laughs> right? Exactly. I did. I got to told you on that. <laughs> Honestly, I'll be I'll be uh, brutally honest. It, it wasn't one of those weeks where you felt like you were totally on the end of edge of your seat. Okay. Um, cause we kind of knew what was coming. We kind of knew what was happening and it was a matter of determining who the, the quality of the games determined who was going to the Western clash or not. Um, and that kind of just left it at that. So sure. my most exciting, exciting game was definitely Tempo storm versus endemic because endemic came out starting looking really good. And I don't know what happened, but <laughs> it all crumpled. Something. Um, yeah, so it is what it is. Um, sure. We did actually hear uh, uh, what we didn't know at the time was when LFM Esports played. It was actually the last game for their support player aware. Um, it was announced shortly after that. I think Monday is when it came out that aware is leaving LFM to pursue a really exciting job opportunity. So well, that's cool. Um, yeah, it's great for him, and now the team needs to replace their support player before the new the second part begins on August twenty fourth. Yeah, right. So, uh, you know, it's a tough spot for the team, and he's been there for a while, right? I mean, two years or something like that. And yeah, so... LFM played in the open division for quite some time. They were playing together. You know, obviously, you stay together as much as you can as an open division team because you only do get a couple of substitutions just to keep your eligibility to keep the number of points that you earn over the 10 cups that you have to earn to try to get a spot in the playoffs. So there's incentive for you to keep your team roster together. Um, and, and aware was with the group for almost two years and they felt really, they were very, it was sad to see him go. It was one of the, one of those situations where it was like, we totally wish him well. He's a great player, great person. And he leaves on good terms. Well, that's good. That's good, at least. So, mm -hmm. uh, all right, let's talk about these teams as we head into the clash. Um, yes. And uh, just, I know we don't have what the group rounds are going to be or anything like that. We don't have the brackets. We don't know exactly what's going on um, with that stuff. But what teams look strongest to you on both the NA and EU sides of things? Once again, I do think that we are going to have a battle of seeing. Which of the EU teams are going to? I, well, how do I put this? How is, let's see I how see... much of the EU can smash NA is what you're trying to say. I think is that is that what you're trying I'm to say? I'm not trying to say that, but I but think I'm I just gonna, did. But I'm gonna say that because <laughs> well, the EU I, you should know. just annihilate the NA. But ah, we'll check it out. We'll we'll see what if it's something fun like that. You know what it is, though? We've had some major development in talent and skill. And what we're going into right now is an unknown situation with certain teams in the NA division, and that's Tempo Storm. Tempo Storm is a strong team, and they're also just adapting to the fact that they lost a, a major team member of, of caliber like Psalm, who is just, like, incredible human. And... He, he's been replaced by Vin, who's been doing very, very well. Are they ready to face someone again, like face down a Team Liquid, Team Dignitas? And I, I think that we will see something different this time around, mainly because what happens right now is that Tempo Storm has picked up a, a coach from Korea. It's Swoy, who is now doing their drafting, which is an interesting thing to see. You've got a Korean drafter bringing those strategies to EU. I'm really, really excited to see what Temple Storm brings. And I, I want to, but it, they are an unknown. So 
I can't really say what I would expect, except that I want to see them somewhere in the top four. It's going to be Dignitas and Liquid pretty much like I I would probably put those. Two. If, if they don't wind up in the same like brackets yeah. like, up against each sure. other to eliminate each other, it could really be those two at the end. But Heroes Hearts has been incredible. I want to see them do well. I would love to see them in the finals. I think that mm-hmm. there's they are NA's best hope to be in the finals. Seven and, and zero right now. So I mean, hey, yeah, that's something. They are really playing at a level beyond what anyone expected, and they haven't yet hit their cap. So it would it would be one of the most amazing things for this Western Clash to have an NA team in the finals. We haven't had that for quite some time. <laughs> we would very much like that to happen. Um, it would. It, it would make for an. Ex- not repeat. It would make for an exciting stream. That's for sure. So holy. I mean, uh, you all will be hearing me scream from the rooftops if that happens, and the momentum is just there. It's right there. Like you mentioned, Heroes Hearth is seven and zero. Yeah. They are. They're. They're. They've just developed in a in a way that no one has really seen before with an NA team for a while, like for a while. Um, And you know, unless, unless they go up like a Dignitas or a liquid early on, you know, and even then they might be able to fight back. Right. So (sighs) yeah, most likely it's going to be a double elimination bracket. So there's going to be opportunities if you lose to, to find your way, fight your way back there. It's just, I, I don't know. I I mean, I'm going to pick Dignitas to win it all because that's what you do. <laughs> but... <laughs> right, right. But I, I hope that we do see some shake up to this dynamic for a change. Yes, that would be nice. It would be nice to to not be as predictable. So <laughs> that'd be great. Well, yes. if the, if something interesting happens in uh, in you know the the group selection stuff. Uh, let us know, please, uh, and then will. we will definitely catch up with you on the wrap up on the other side of the Western Clash, which actually happens uh, starts August tenth, right? Yes. All right. Well, Jules Scott, uh, thank you for your time and attention, and, and now we will uh, continue on with the show, I guess. Uh, it's time to talk HCT. A little bit of Hearthstone action, and of course, uh, Jocelyn Moffat is here. Hello, Joss. Hello, Pat. Uh, so. Let's talk instead of about HCT. Let's talk about Hearthstone. Let's talk about the new, l- the latest and greatest stuff, the new expansion. We finally have all of the card reveals done, right? Yes, the stream just finished. Okay, so uh, we've seen now all the cards in the set. It is a really incredible set. They're playing with a lot of different mechanics. They're playing around with some design spaces. So um, we've seen the science projects now. We've seen all those revealed. And those are the things that do the same thing to both you and your opponent. So the Druid is right. Mana Crystal Ramp. And the Warrior grants weapons and armor to both players. So there's some really interesting yep. mechanics there. Like a risk-reward type of a thing. Okay. Um, And then uh, we also saw them playing with not only hand size, but location of your cards in your hand. So for instance, um, there's a mage card that uh, allows you to draw a card when you play the rightmost card in your hand if she's on the board. There's also a warlock card that allows you to give the leftmost minion in your hand (laughs) plus two plus two. So... They're playing around with some interesting design space in this expansion, and I hope they do more because it's really interesting and I think could potentially have a high skill cap for managing not only like your draw order, but your play order to get things in your hand the right way. Because obviously, when in Hearthstone, we can't actually organize our hand in any way shape or form which so. i hate i hate it this is the thing <laughs> the one the one gripe i've always had about hearthstone is that that i can't organize my hand i can't set it up and so then i have to like think and remember stuff and i'm not good with <laughs> either of those things so with thinking or remembering no 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 so uh so yeah so now it's going to be even more tricky for people like me or just me <laughs> uh, i'm not sure what it is uh, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, what else is going on with with uh, the new stuff? Because I know that there's a lot of 
uh, new spells, new, I mean, we have these legendary spells now. Anything else uh, fall out of that as far as like big legendary spells? Um, I think there's a couple of really inter- there's there's a couple of really terrible ones. Okay. <laughs> but there's a couple of really interesting ones. I think that um Myra's unstable element, which is the rogue spell, right. which is the draw the rest of your deck. We saw this one pretty early on in reveals. I think that one has a lot of interesting applications potentially. Sure. Um I also like uh oh, which one was it? Um Oh, Floop's Glorious Gloop, <laughs> which is the Druid one, which is revealed on stream today, which I think, first of all, has a fabulous name that I will never misuse ever, ever, right. ever. <laughs> right. But also, whenever a minion dies this turn, you gain one mana crystal this turn. So this opens oh. up some really cool plays for Druid, uh, particularly in a token style, which they're also really helping a lot with the whole Treant idea. So you can play this spell, it's only one mana, and, you know, like, play out a whole bunch of other stuff, and then use your minions to help you control the board. They all die because they're little tokens, and then you get a whole bunch of, like, a, a big mana refresh. But it only sticks around for that turn, which is interesting, and I think a good way to design mana cards, it's more along the lines of an innervate than a wild growth, okay. because the idea of, like getting mana crystals and then keeping them and ramping is druid does enough of that already <laughs> so i like the the one-time use type right. mana thing but yeah they're they're really doing a lot with druid and mana and uh manipulation of that so okay. uh so I, th I think it's great i think it's gonna be really good now do you have and, and i know again we just saw the reveals and stuff like that but do you have an idea or a sense of of what classes will benefit the most or or be or like the meta shift will be maybe in their favor because of this expansion it's it's really hard to tell because this happens every time we get a set reveal right, where right. it's just it's so hard to tell <laughs> without yeah. actually playing with the cards in like mixed in with the rest of the set but i will say uh druid was already strong and they got a few very strong additions so I don't think druids are going anywhere. I think that they have most of the archetypes they're already playing kind of got shored up and, and might find space for one or two new cards. But generally, those druid archetypes, I think, are going to stick around. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I think that uh, mage is kind of meh. Paladin is kind of meh. Although they got a really cool mech egg, <laughs> literally called Mechano Egg, <laughs> we saw on stream today. Nice. Or just a 0 5 that summons an 8 8. <laughs> so maybe wow. there's some mech paladin stuff that, that might work, but I don't know if it'll overtake just a straight up, like aggressive kind of flood the board play style that we see out of them right now. Sure. Um, but yeah, I think. There's lots of really cool stuff in here in terms of like totally new archetypes. I'm not really sure what we're going to see. Um, Warrior is probably the one that's, uh, and we actually saw in HCT Tokyo, no one brought Warrior. So I think that's going to be our biggest change is that I think we're going to see a resurgence of Warrior. Dr. Okay. Boom is just such a good card. So I think he's going to go in quite a lot of decks. And then they also got a lot of mech synergy alongside him. So sure. I think that, uh, yeah, some some sort of like mech warrior, which like, best archetype name ever but i think some kind of mech warrior is going to be uh is the the new hotness okay. for this next expansion cool uh and like you mentioned now we'll, now we'll switch over to, to the competitive side of hearthstone uh and let's really talk about uh hct because season two is wrapped up now with hct tokyo in the books uh and you said no warrior that's kind of yep that's kind of weird right Warrior totally fell out of favor, uh, which is really interesting because this was one of the most aggressive lineups that we've seen in terms of uh, even our final was crazy. Uh, Token Druid, Zulok, Aggro Mage, Miracle Rogue, Odd Hunter, which I don't think we've seen in serious competitive play actually making it into even like top 16s. It's uh, wow. This was a very, very aggressive tournament. And so I think a 
Taunt Warrior probably would have done okay. But uh, yeah, there didn't seem to be a whole lot of aggression punishing lineups. Okay. So yeah, we ended up with two very aggressive players in the final. And uh, yeah, no Warriors to be seen. So I think that'll be the biggest swing once we get into Boomsday. Okay. <laughs> I can, for whatever Boomsday. reason, never remember the name of the new expansion. It's just my tongue doesn't want to wrap around it. But right. um Yeah, so we did still have a fairly good variety of archetypes, though. We had 20 archetypes represented over these 16 players. So it was a very, very interesting tournament. But unfortunately for Warrior, no representation there. Aw, bummer. (laughs) Uh, So what was the... uh, So who was the the winner? How did it fall out for placements and stuff like that? Uh, So Hunter Ace actually uh, ended up coming in the top four. So team placement wise... It means that he got his team another 10 points, so he narrowed the gap there a little bit, which is something that we were talking about, um, I guess, last time we recorded, is how well he was going to do and how that might shake up the team standing. So the teams are actually, the top three are quite close now. But um, overall, it was Hinaya from Japan who was our winner, and he was playing against um, Alan from uh, Chinese Taipei. So it was uh, it was a really really interesting tournament. It was a great um, because it was an offline finals. We had our top sixteen going in, and then they played through a group stage, which I love when tournaments do this. I it always feels bad when they go from like seven or eight rounds of Swiss into a single elimination, like top 16 bracket. I'm just like, oh man, Right. <laughs> it always feels bad to see people like who have done really well through Swiss and then lose in the first round of the playoffs. And you're just like, ah, oh, man, that's gotta feel bad. So yeah. I love when they do group stuff. That's cool. Uh, so, and th- there was a little bit of news that kind of fell out of Tokyo as well. Uh, and like you uh, kind of said, it, he finished in fourth, but uh, Hunter Ace has some exciting news, right? He does. He is the first ever Hearthstone Master after only two seasons. And originally when the idea of Hearthstone Master came out, we were thinking that the point target, especially after season one had finished, that the point target might be a little bit excessive because it's 150 points to be considered a Hearthstone Master. And what they do is they accumulate points over three seasons. And then if you hit 150, it's actually calculated at the start of every new season. So as of today, Hunter Ace is the first Hearthstone Master because we're now starting Season 3. And so he managed to score 151 points over two seasons. Wow! So that means he can literally score zero points for the next eight months and still be counted as a Hearthstone Master. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's incredible. And I do remember talking uh, to you about this at the beginning of this season and just kind of like, Okay, that seems like a lot of points. And I'm like, oh, all right, well, we'll just keep an eye on that. And now he's a master after two seasons. That's awesome. Uh, so congratulations to Hunter Ace uh, for for that big news uh, there. Now we kick off into season three, right? We do. And uh, there are quite a few players. Well, not quite quite a few players. We've got, I think, about six or seven players with over 100 points. So we've got some people who are kind of heading into that master territory. But there's supposed to be monthly online tournaments involved as soon as you hit master that are available for cash prizes. So right now we have one, yeah. <laughs> one Hearthstone master. So does Hunter Ace just automatically win? He just who wins. We'll he just stay. wins all the yeah. money. <laughs> Just he just they, they send him monthly checks yeah <laughs> like yeah, yeah. well done nice win <laughs> nice, um, nice work way to win that <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh so yeah we are starting in uh season three now and um we've got uh hct tai chung i'm probably saying that wrong i'm really sorry it's in it, taiwan <laughs> it, it looks it looks right so that that's the and, way that i would pronounce it Good. (laughs) And so that's happening uh, tonight, starting tonight until August 5th. Uh, There's 120 players registered currently, including uh, Fei Li, Teebs, and Katsukuri were the names that jumped out at me when I was looking at the bracket. So uh, that's going to be going on over the next few days. If you guys want to check that out. Uh, The preliminaries aren't being streamed, but as soon as they hit the round of 16, that will be on stream. And I believe it's on the main Play Hearthstone uh, channel. So you guys should go and check that out. And then we have probably the most exciting tournament that we've seen in a long time. HCT Germany is coming August 11th and 12th. And that's really interesting because it's like three days after the expansion launches. So we'll have to see what the deck list deadlines look like and what players can actually do with three days of prep. It's insane. And it's in Germany, which is a huge esport country. I mean, just 
absolutely yes. ginormous when it comes to all esports. Uh, so I'm kind of looking forward to see uh, how everybody reacts to the new expansion and everything as well. So crowd reaction is always important. Um, yes. <laughs> and we also still have the Hearthstone Global Games going on, right? Yeah, so Hearthstone Global Games are going on. Again, those stream on the main Play Hearthstone Twitch channel, and that happens every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so it's actually live right now. And in terms of countries, we've got Spain, China, and Ukraine that have completed their matches this week and are currently 3-0. and And then we've got Romania, Chinese Taipei, Brazil, New Zealand, Czech Republic and Singapore, who are actually two and zero, they haven't had their round, they haven't had their matches yet this week. So okay. uh, we've got uh, a lot of countries represented. Sadly, Canada not doing so well, U.S. <laughs> not doing so well. So <laughs> uh, stuff yeah. happens. What can you say? Yeah. yeah. Um, and and uh, you were saying before we actually started uh, taping that that uh, or I guess recording. We nobody tapes anymore. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Your age so is showing before that. we started recording, <laughs> uh, and uh, you were saying that the reveal stream was on a different Twitch channel because we had Hearthstone Global Games going on. It's like, um, guys, which is more? I don't, I don't, I can't judge which is more important. And apparently, they just said, "Well, we're doing Global Games over here, so we'll just have to find a different stream." Yeah, I think it gives their esports a little bit of consistency to put yeah. the global games on the same channel every week. Then if anyone's looking for it, it's right there. But at the same time, it was kind of like, oh, wait, where? <laughs> like I went to play Hearthstone. I'm like, this is global games. This isn't the reveal stream. What's right. going on? Right. Uh, so, yeah, if you guys are looking for the replay of the reveal stream, it was actually on twitch.tv slash blizzard. So you guys can go and look for the replay over there. Plus, I'm sure it's going to be up on YouTube. So. All right. Well, I think that does it for this week, unless you have something, some other shocking news for us about Hearthstone stuff. I don't know. Nope. Hunter right. Ace was the big news this week, so All congratulations. Right. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, thank you, Joss, as always. Uh, make sure to check out Jocelyn Moffat uh, doing all of her different podcasts and, and live streams and stuff like that. Uh, she does quite a few. That's all I'm going to say. You're a very, you're a very hardworking content producer. So uh, thank you once again for your insight. And we will talk to you again very, very soon. Thanks for having me, Pat. And that is going to do it for us here at Battle.net Sports. I want to thank Jules and Joss and Thist. And make sure to check out all of their different shows, all the things that those guys do, uh, because they are phenomenal. They really are. And I want to thank you guys as well for stopping by each and every week like you do. Uh, it's a fantastic look at the esports that are happening all over the Blizzard universe. And I love doing this show. So, so thank you for uh, joining me and, and, and helping me along here. And if you would like to find out more about what we do over here at Convert to Raid, uh, just go to ConvertToRaid.com. That's where all of the stuff is, our video, our audio, uh, our guild stuff. If you want to join our WoW guild, that's totally cool. Uh, and uh, also over there is the Convert to Raid Podcast Network, which features shows from not only the regulars at Battle.net Sports, but also all the regular guys over at Battle.net News as well. So make sure to go to ConvertToRaid.com for all of that stuff and more. Uh, thank you guys so much for uh, joining us, and we will see you next time. For all the guys here at Convert to Raid, bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.